I want to know what advice you would have to management learners, possibly accounting or finance management learners who want to take on a little bit more of that uncertainty, but don't know if they can manage it or they want tips on how to manage it. So can I ask you what your advice to management learners would be to, you know, deal with that uncertainty? Oh, that's such a, such a good question, Sam. Cause I, I didn't know how to start, right? I started my career was okay. I work here. This is my job. I have one stream of income and it takes a lot of time. How do I start diversifying? How do I go into some of that uncertainty and try different things? Um, and I, this kind of dovetails, I think into, you're going to maybe ask me about podcasts and books later, but, um, I through a podcast I listened to, um, it exposed me to this book called the 10% entrepreneur. Mm. So you, you tend to think of people doing the startup thing as it has to be their whole thing and they're taking all this risk and it's just, you're all in and you're. A lot of us look at it that and say, and myself included, like, oh, I can't, I can't give up my paycheck for years and hope this one thing is successful. Um, but essentially the message in that book was if you're willing to have a side hustle or a few extra hours a week, whatever it may be, start looking for opportunities like that and scratch that entrepreneurial itch on the side while you're yeah. still, especially early in your career, you're, you know, you're just trying to pay rent and afford the mac and cheese and ramen that you're eating and stuff uh you know? oh, yeah. I'm like, i don't know about you but like my energy in my 20s was like yeah yeah like i got this and so it's like harness that because yeah. like my energy is still high but it's different so like harness that energy and harness the skill set and get paid to yeah. learn things because essentially that's what the 10 yeah. percent entrepreneur could be is being paid to pick up more skill sets absolutely and and you never know when just you know dipping your toes in, in that water in one way or another might bring forward another opportunity. Right. And then it, it can start snowballing for you. And if, if you're the type of person who's comfortable trying to pick up your own clients and not having that level of certainty, say six months down the road, um, it's a, it's a great way to start exposing yourself to it, especially when you're, you know, late in university, early in your career. Um, like another thing that I've seen, uh, somewhat more recently when we're looking for junior analysts who can help us with even just building out pro formas or, you know, small little quick project things is um, a lot of students who are near the end of their, uh, their degree who are trying to pick up little jobs like that on the side. Um, nice. So that, and, and you'd be surprised for all the students out there how much of a need there is on short-term basis for firms like the one I work for, where we're pressed for time, we're trying to get a deal done, and we're like, we need somebody to do a day of research, and none of us have the time. Boy, it'd be great if we could short-term hire somebody who's junior, who's, like you said, who's looking to get paid to learn. Um, there's opportunities out there. Uh, it's a matter of um, making yourself available and, and seeing who will pay you to learn. Yeah, and having this connection so that when the short-term need does come up, they know to reach out to you um, versus like, hey, what do you have right now? It's like, no, I'll just like go out. Keshav's interview is great um, that we did because he worked in like, and also made relationships with the people that he worked with or the people that worked with people that he worked with and just made relationships so that, you know, um, I don't know what his intent is, but I, I know that I, an intent, if somebody was curious about making their own way, is like, you put yourself out there and then they know, hey, maybe I'll reach out to this person that I met. Oh, this person is keen to learn this. Oh, that's great. Because yeah, Pat, like you and I have both been there where you're just like, oh my gosh, we have more work than we have hours. I wish like, who can I think of that would be A, have the skill set possibly, but B, wants to be there and will like make yeah. it work and who will, you know, pull an all-nighter to come through for the team, which is to me, more important than the skill set. Absolutely. Um, you can, you can develop skill sets. Um, it's a lot harder to teach work ethic or change someone's work ethic and willingness to grind if you have to grind. Right. Um, and, and it doesn't always have to be the all nighter either. Hopefully, yeah. you know, if, um, if, if it's the right thing, it can be very manageable hours. We hope usually, but 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We always hope yeah. so. And then we hope so. Every once we... not, but I feel I, I feel like our superpower is like we plan and plan and we, you know, are pragmatic, but sometimes you just you have to pull that lever. Yeah. Sometimes brute force is just the only way to get through it. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Uh, I want to throw something out there um, yeah. and see if you agree or disagree. But when we look at companies and we analyze their financial statements, if one company had a single source of revenue, we would call that risky. Correct or incorrect? I love this, Sam. Yes, that absolutely. <laughs> and yet, when we see a company who maybe they don't have steady uh, increasing revenues year over year, but they have multiple streams of income, and sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down, but at least they have multiple streams of, of revenue. What do we tend to think about those companies? They're diversified, they're more stable, they're safer. Um, they can they can weather a shock, right? That like you said, one stream might be down one year, but they've there's enough enough eggs in the basket that um, you know they're they're rarely going to be in in serious trouble uh, with all their different streams at the same time. Yeah. So why is it then that we tend to feel like um, the narrative out there, at least for accountants, um, that I seem to see and seems to be uh, commonly accepted within our business school and really within our profession is that one job is the best thing and you should go to X job and work up and in five years, make manager and in blah, blah, blah years, make VP and blah, 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 make blah, blah, blah and da, da, da. But yet to me, that is so risky because, and maybe that involves a company change or two, but it's still a single source of income and it relies on a bunch of factors outside of your control. It relies on market conditions. Is there going to be a need? It relies on, you know, political influence, like the best power in my opinion is opportunity cost is to have a lot of you know, if you have to turn something down because you have sli something slightly better, it might feel like garbage, but that's amazing because it means you have options and you've diversified your personal revenue. Oh, absolutely. Like you're, you're speaking my language right now all the way. Um, and that was, that was something I was telling myself when I was trying to break out from the one job into the multiple different streams was, I'm a business, right? Like yeah. I'm, I'm not just an employee. I'm, if I want to be a business, I can be a business. And it's at the point now where I actually, I'm incorporated. I have my own professional corporation because I, I hit the point I needed that. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's such a good way to insulate your earnings um, to have these different multiple streams coming in. And even if it's just two, um, yeah. It's, it's something extra over your regular day job, even if you're one of the people who wants to focus. And there's a lot of us who focus on, I have my career at such and such firm, such and such company. Like it's not a bad thing, but man, is it ever safe and, and helpful if you've got just one other little piece coming in. Yeah. And for those people that maybe don't feel comfortable taking on uh, more work or consulting at or something, I would encourage to then diversify with a volunteer gig because yeah. there's going to be learning there. There's going to be likely be mentorship. And honestly, like the people that when you are surrounded by a community of your people working towards a common objective, um, you can, you know, accomplish some really cool things, develop your accounting skill set, develop other skill sets, and that might lead to other work. And that's another way of at least diversifying your network. Um, and then, yeah, it's just like looking at it strategically, which we don't always do personally. And I will say I did freak out my first batch of students the first year. Do you want to do you want to hear something embarrassing? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I asked them to define what job security was after like, this is like my last class, so, like your last class of the semester. And I was going to see them again the next semester, fourth year, intermediate financial accounting two. Uh, the technical is done. We're doing a bit of review. And then it was like the chit chatty part. And I asked them to define what job security was. So <laughs> they were like, it's when you get a, a T4 job. It's when you, uh, it's when your employer pays you enough money that you can make rent and, you know, go for dinner a few times. And like, these are all really good answers. And like, they, they were all really like better answers than I would ever give when I was fourth year, like a student, I would have been like, 
I don't know, like, <laughs> right? Like, what would you have said as a fourth year student? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like probably like, I don't know. I have, I have an employment contract of some kind. Yeah. <laughs> I've signed something that says somebody will pay me to do a job. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's job security. Um, yeah. And unfortunately um, for those students, my dad um, had been offered essentially to either be laid off um, a one-year package or a demotion and 10% decrease to his salary after being with the same company for over 25 years. Um, and so I was, I was definitely like a little bit, and my whole life, I've thought of myself like as a business eventually, right? Because of that, you know, just the economic uncertainty. So unfortunately, you know, for my dad, that kind of came in and I, I told my students like, listen, job security is providing a company or multiple companies more value than you cost. And, oh, like and I'm I like, like the rest is all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and I was like, listen, um, if you provide more value than you cost, then people are going to be like clamoring for you and your ability to lose a job and go get a job in a relatively short amount of time. That's the confidence. And that's, you know, building up the skill set and realizing like, hey, I can go out there and I can, you know, kill it as an accountant, as an eager student, like I can go out there and, and provide a skill set. And so I didn't, it was kind of something part of what I said, because we did the financial analysis on what my dad should do, right? It, even though it had already happened, I wanted to kind of show them the counter, counteractive, like counterintuitive thinking, because like some people would have said, oh, we should keep the job. And I'm like, then he's paying the company like 90% of his salary to stay there. Whereas like they're essentially giving him free money to leave and he could walk across the street and get a similar job. Like, yeah. You know, and so it's, it's that thinking that comes naturally to us now that we've been in the environment for a little bit, but something that kind of the counterintuitive, like narrative thinking. So then over Christmas, um, I think nothing of it, you know, and then I come back and one student, like a half hour before class, like meets me in office hours. And he's like, okay, well, I learned how to take apart a computer and put it back together. And then I'm also going to learn another skill so that I have job security. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> took it very seriously I like that yeah, he did, but he said that like for the first um like few days he was really like upset and I I'm like okay like you know we talk about audience we talk about tone we talk about like our CPA learners who are you know on average 24 to you know 74 I need to remember and this is why I love this podcast is like yes we want to talk open and we want to talk um, you know, seriously, because these are adults and these are people with like amazing, not only potential, but they're doing cool stuff now, but it's also like, okay, instead of giving a problem also provide some solutions or some examples of solutions, you know, to provide that like path forward. So I learned just as much as, as they learn through our interactions. Oh man. I, I love that. Um, that's such a great question to ask too, because it's, you want job security, but you I've never tried to truly define it. I've, I think I've, you know, I've backed into it um, by cobbling together all these different streams of income. Um, but such a good exercise to define it and see what it means to you and then try to actually pair that up with your approach to your own career. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's yeah, not, not straightforward. Okay. Yeah. That, that got